Father Lord, thank you for yet another opportunity. Give every listener the grace for the change of levels through your word that is about to come. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. The supernatural is the realm beyond the natural realms. But interestingly, all that is natural was bathed in the supernatural. In actuality, the natural is the manifestation of the programming and execution of the supernatural. It therefore goes to mean, that if you can control or be under the control of the supernatural, then you are in control and can decide what happens in the natural or physical world. You can have control over the affairs of life. What should happen and what should not happen. In regards to this, the Bible says in Job chapter 22, verses 28 and 29. You will also declare a thing, and it will be established for you, so light will shine on your ways. When they cast you down, and you say, Exaltation will come. Then he will save the humble person. Now the declaration here talks about taking control of what happens in nature using your mouth or word. We saw in the scripture in 1 Kings, chapter 17, verse 1 how Elijah stopped rain from falling in Israel for three and a half years through his word or declaration. For the Bible says, And Elijah the Tishbite, of the inhabitants of Gilead, said to Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel lives, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, except at my word. And that was it. Rain ceased in Israel until he declared otherwise. That's exactly what it means to control the natural by controlling the supernatural. Because the natural world and all that happens in it are directly controlled by the supernatural. God has put in the hands of the sons of men the control of the affairs of this life. But beyond just the hands of every man, Certain men shall avail themselves of the grace of connection to God, who in actuality works out every supernatural happening and brings them into the natural as what we know and call miracles. However, to get the powers to operate in or through the supernatural, you must understand and apply the technology that makes it possible. One of the dynamics that accord us access to the supernatural is being born again. This has to be in terms and with the exact words of Jesus Christ in his contact with and interaction with Nicodemus. For the Bible says in John chapter 3, from verse 1 through 13, There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel, and do not know these things? Most assuredly, I say to you, We speak what we know and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven but he who came down from heaven, 
that is, the Son of Man who is in heaven. So the number one prerequisite to being able to control the supernatural is that you must be born again. When you get born again, you are translated from the realms of the natural to the realms of the spiritual, which is where the supernatural and its control reside. But until you are born again, you lack access to it. And how do you get born again? By receiving the Son of God, Jesus Christ and making him your Lord and Savior. Here is what the Lord says in John chapter 1, verses 12 to 13. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. Who were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Interestingly, this process does not require much effort, it is as simple as God has made it. This is to enable as many that care and are willing to access it. In John 3 verses 16 to 21, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that the light has come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light, that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. And in giving further explanation to it, Apostle Paul wrote in Romans 10, from verses 9 to 13, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And those are all that is required to gain control and begin to engineer the natural through manifestation and control from the supernatural. Let us pray. Before I pray for you, if you desire to be saved and from henceforth, be in control of the affairs of this life, leverage on the power that you are going to receive as we pray. Repeat the following prayers after me. For without the gift or the giving of the Holy Spirit, you have no power to control or exact any influence in the natural world, let alone the supernatural. Hence the Bible says in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So the Holy Spirit is what gives us power and access to operate in the supernatural when we receive Jesus and make him our Lord and Savior. Repeat after me if you wish to receive him now. Say Lord Jesus, thank you for the grace of hearing your word. Lord, I receive and believe your word. I now accept you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive my sins, for I now repent of them. Cleanse me, Lord, from all unrighteousness. Remove my name from the book of death and put it in the book of life. Thank you, dear Lord, for hearing and answering me, for in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord I pray. Amen. Now let me pray for you. Everlasting Father, King of Glory, Thank you for the lives of my listeners, particularly those who have prayed and accepted you afresh as the Lord and personal Savior. 
Dear Lord, accord them the rights and privileges of sonship and daughtership to you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Forgive them and cause them to be lifted to sit with you in the high places above the principalities and powers. Cause them to receive afresh the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, so as to be able to operate in the realms of the supernatural. Thank you dear Father and Lord for answering, for in Jesus' most precious name I pray. Amen. Congratulations. You have been empowered, so go and possess your possessions in Jesus' name.